so we'll, we'll start now so obviously we're not talking about um our first experiences working in short films just because of um keith's friend and tutor who died recently so um uh keith tell us more about um yeah uh, about ralph okay i mean yes. um i think weirdly enough this 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 does sort of follow on from where we sort of got to in terms of you know pursuing our careers um or, you know in as filmmakers um what what happened was uh i think i may have mentioned this once before is when i was when i was looking to go to uh film school originally um you know there there, there were fewer of them and the ones that there were in the uk was were quite difficult to get on and i actually applied i'm from bournemouth and i applied to the um uh, for the film program there which even to this day has a very good name um but sadly uh, i didn't even get you know they had so they were so flooded with applicants that they couldn't get through everyone and and i wasn't seen for it and this sort of coincided with with the time that i first went over to the states uh to to, to visit um as a tourist you know and um i kind of had this thing where part of me part of me wanted to go to film school um part of me wanted to go traveling and the reality was if I was going to do this I was going to have to self-finance it and I couldn't do both yeah um so I thought oh you know obviously America's the the land of opportunity and the place where a lot of the the films and 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 my heroes to to that to date had, had come from um so I thought, well, maybe I'll go to film school in the U.S. So I, so I did the obvious thing and looked at USC and UCLA and, you know, the places that the likes of the Spielbergs and the and the Coppolas and, and um, uh, even Carpenter went to. <laughs> so, yeah, um, the, the places that we all of us over here. For... Yes, exactly. I looked into them and I mean, they were they were astronomically expensive to do at that time. All right. So um, that 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 wasn't an option. However um as sort of fate would have it around the same time that this was taking place steven spielberg appeared on the today show and recommended um for people that want to learn the nuts and bolts of filmmaking film production recommended this course at valencia college in in florida okay and um at the time uh, i mean we're talking this was kind of mid 90s yeah at the time it was very much felt industry wise that orlando was going to become hollywood east that was kind of you, you know what what the prediction was and and you know as things turned out that didn't actually happen um so it seemed like a really good idea so basically i i went out and um I had a meeting at Univer. I managed to get some, they were only production assistants, but I managed to get some people at Universal Studios at the studio part. They were doing um, Swamp Thing, I think, was, the, was the, 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 the program that was being produced there at the time. Okay. Was this Universal LA or U- Un- Orlando? No, this, sorry, this was Universal Florida. Yes, Orlando. And um, I managed to, uh, to sort of blag a meeting um and basically asked for some advice and you know we were, i was asking about um university of central florida i was asking about a place called full cell which is um uh, a place in florida that, that that trains um uh filmmakers and uh valencia college was actually recommended to me by them and they told me to speak to this this guy called ralph clemente who um had run the the program at the University of Miami for several years and had migrated that across to, to Valencia College. And obviously, because this was a college rather than a university, it meant that, you know, tuition fees, et cetera, were a bit more um, manageable. So I went to meet this, this absolutely infectious character, uh, Ralph Clemente. Ralph, Ralph's background is... Um, uh, he 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 came from i want to say germany or austria i i need to double check that actually but um he he had this this accent and he had this this way about him um 
but he was one of the most passionate people about film that, 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 that I'd met. Um, and, you know, I went in for an interview with him and, you know, he, he said that they'd been working with every year they would have, um, industry people come over to, to work with them. And they'd had the likes of Robert Weiss. Uh, they'd had the likes of George Romero. Um, you, you, you know, they, they, they'd worked with some quite, um, you know, significant names on these things. And he took me around and they had, I mean, this co for a college, they were well equipped. They had um, uh, grip and electric trucks with uh, generators and all H HMI lighting, et cetera. Um, they had uh, 16 mil cameras, uh, you know, Aeroflex cameras. They had dollies. They had all of the gear, basically. And he said, this is a really good place. This, you know, we, we don't do a lot in terms of film history and film theory and, and, you know, writing and things of that nature. He said, you know, the creative side, you know, you guys are the creative people. He said, what, what we focus on is, is, is real world best practices, nuts and bolts production. And he said, what, what happens is you, you form part of a crew that will work on a real production and you learn that way. And I was like, I was fairly sold on this, you know, uh, I think largely because of this guy's personality. I mean, he really was, um, you, you know, quite a character to say the least. Um, you know, big cigar, big grinning smile, re really, really nice guy. <laughs> and, um, yeah. he, 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 he took time to talk to me several times because obviously I had to then go away and sort of save to be able to make this, this move and, and get into this college um which i which i eventually did it took me took me a couple of years but i got out there so after those meetings then you did you come back to england and then have to start saving to go back pretty much yes i mean i was i was fortunate i was working in in it at the time and you know considering i was you know uh, 20 years old or whatever i was i was earning a um, a reasonable wage and uh I uh, had the potential to earn more through, you know, commission and things of that nature because I was selling a, a fairly niche product. So I, I got busy, basically. I got my head down and made sure that I was a success so that I could afford to do this. And whilst I was doing this, I obviously applied and made sure, you know, I had all the visas in place, et cetera, et cetera. And um, basically went out there and, and, and did, you know, lived out there for three years and did this course. Um, and got my uh, my associate degree um, in 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 that, and uh, you know learned loads. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't change that for the world. Um, but you know, the man himself, Ralph, was was as I said, massively inspirational. Um, he had you know there were a lot of people out there in the industry out in Hollywood that um, you know. In fact, I remember you know. The David Nutter story, part of that, I, I'll never forget. I was in Ralph's office one day and a picture came in. Um, uh, basically, he was sent in the mail a framed photograph. And it was uh, of a scene from Millennium because David Nutter was directing the, the pilot of Millennium. And it had him. It was a photograph of him directing Lance Henriksen. OK. And oh, he wow. had written on the photo, signed on the photo, to Ralph, I would not be here today if you weren't there for me then, David. Oh, and I thought, wow. Amazing. Yeah, and I thought, wow, you know. And of course, I mean, Nutter's career has just gone from, from strength to strength, you know, um, since that time. I mean, that, that was kind of, uh, Millennium was his sort of first, I believe, pilot uh that he directed and obviously he's gone on to do pretty much <laughs> every pilot since but um <laughs> oh he started on that yeah absolutely yes saw so the second part of that um uh, video essay about that series today and that was that was very very interesting you know just sort of to see his name pop up yeah like well i mean ralph i mean ralph absolutely loved to tell this story and i mean i won't do it the justice that ralph used to but um 
essentially what happened with David is David was one of Ralph's students at the University of Miami. And um, at the time, um, the, it, it got to a point where they were going to make their, they, they would make one feature a year as part of the course. And, um, you know, they, 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 they get professionals in, but then the, the bulk of the crew. So in other words, the, the whole above the line, below the line thing, a lot of the above the line they would bring in, but the below the line would, would, would essentially be um, the class people that would get interviewed for those roles and then fill those roles and have that as part of their training. Yeah. Which is amazing when you think about it. Yeah. And um, they, you know, they were always getting approached with people with scripts and some money that they wanted to basically do this. And they were approached by um, Ralph was approached and they had this project. Uh, this was, this would be in the sort of mid eighties, I guess, 1984, 85 called um, ceasefire. Okay. Um, but for some reason, the director or whatever had, had dropped out and they needed somebody to, to sort of, you know, they had the producers and the writers and all this sort of thing, but they needed somebody to actually direct the project and David, at that point, had had the most experience in doing short films and, and, and things on the program. So he came in to direct this. And what happened was, I mean, Ralph used to love to tell this story. Basically, um, the actor that, that, that was in this film, ultimately, and they got involved was Don Johnson. Oh, wow. OK. But at the time, this was right before the whole Miami Vice thing. It was literally like a year before he got Miami Vice. Oh, OK. okay. And what had happened is Don Johnson had done a few films and he'd had a bit of a career, but then he'd also had some sort of personal problems and whatever and fallen off the radar. And Ralph said that they were they were sat in a um, in a diner waiting for Don Johnson, uh, him and David. And Don Johnson walks into the diner and he said, everybody sort of stopped and noticed this guy. He said that was the kind of charisma Don Johnson had even then. Yeah. yeah. And Don Johnson's first line to them was, I won't try and do a voice, but is this going to take long because my car's still running outside and if I, if I turn it off, it won't start again. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Ralph said less than a year later, okay, a year later, Pepsi gave um, Don Johnson a Ferrari Testarossa or a Ferrari, you know, for, yeah. um, for the promotion of Miami Vice. Yeah. And he said, that's how this industry, you know, that's how things can happen and things can change. Yeah. So essentially they got Don Johnson. He did this film for them. OK, which did I, I remember I saw ceasefire. I mean, it was about a it was about a Vietnam uh, veteran that comes back and he's suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome. And he's trying to integrate back into society. Yeah. Don Johnson plays it very well. Yeah. You know? um, as I said, Don Johnson's career, you know, took off after that, which was interesting. What happened with David is he um, he then went on to, as you've correctly pointed out he directed some episodes of superboy which was starring gerard uh, not gerard butler um, <laughs> oh no gerard oh his name's gone out of my head somebody gerard uh <laughs> i'll look it up on <laughs> damn that, that's really i hate it when that happens um gerard but, christopher uh, christopher yeah there you go i knew it was but uh, um, i want to say so he he actually works on something a lot uh Earlier than that, he uh, directed three episodes of Twenty One Jump Street. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean he did. He he, he then started off the back of um, uh, Ceasefire. He did get some episodics that that he was able to direct. And yes, Twenty One Jump Street with with Johnny Depp. Um, you know, Superboy, uh, a few bits and pieces. But apparently, and Ralph always used to tell this story really well. Um, what happened was. Um, he moved out. David moved out to L.A. Yeah. Um, he was he was on a um, a golf course alone, you know, just sort of playing some golf. He always heard that was a good way to meet people and network and whatever. And there were two guys uh, ahead of him. And, and they said, look, you know, would you like to join us? And um, he said, yeah, sure. So they joined him playing golf and just sort of talking when they got to the green or whatever. And um they said, so what do you do? And David was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of a film director and sort of played it down a little bit. And the guy said, 
so w- what have you done? And he said, oh, I did this film called Ceasefire. And the guy said, oh, my God, with Don Johnson, that's, you know, one of my favorite films. It turns out that these guys were Morgan and Wong, who were the producers of The X-Files. Oh, wow. OK. And um, they said that, you know, we've got, we, we're doing this new show um, called The X-Files, blah, 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 you know, and we like your work and all this sort of thing. And David Nutter, the first one he directed was um, an episode called Ice which was very much, bizarrely enough, very much like The Thing. It was kind of one of these ones. It was in season one. I think it was episode seven or eight or something of season one. And it takes place where they're um, in a, on a remote uh, ice base. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, it really memorable. And it was apparently it was the first one to win an Emmy, I believe. Oh, wow. So um, this, this kind of... This kind of set David's career in motion. And obviously off the back of that, he got the Millennium Pilot and so on and so on and so on. Um, but, but, you know, Ralph was very much behind him um, on this sort of thing and, you know, continued to sort of train and inspire, um, y- y- you know, well, generations of, of filmmakers. And, uh, you know, I was his kind of Brit, as he said, because I think I was the at the time the first... Um, you know, guy from the the UK <laughs> that had come over to actually do this course. Um, and, you know, people were coming from all over America, et cetera, um, you, you know, to do this. So, uh, uh, you know, he, 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 was, he was a real character and, um, you, you know, I, I was, you know, deep, deeply sad and deeply moved to, uh, to, to find this out. Um, you, you know, apparently it happened on Sunday just gone right. um he was 72 uh and he got diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer um and and you know very 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 late and uh you know um sadly has passed which i feel really bad you know i, I knew some of his family and um you, you know and, and i kind of you know, I felt like I sort of had unfinished business with Ralph because I was always um, intending someday to maybe go out and, uh, you know, make a make a feature myself with the film program. Oh, OK. Um, but, uh, you, you know, well, that won't happen in that guise now, sadly. Oh. And he was obviously the producer of my first short film. Oh, OK. Which I shot on 16 mil and it was called Overpass. And it was an adaptation of a one act play that um, that somebody in the theatre program uh had, had written and um allowed me to to adapt uh into a short film oh, I'd, I'd love to see that i've not i've not seen that one well my plan is when i get the youtube channel up is is to put it on um put it on the the, the youtube channel i mean you know i watch it nowadays and i cringe slightly <laughs> um because you, you know it was the first thing i did it was it was an adaptation um and you, you know because it, obviously it was of course it was it was edited uh non-linear on avid and whatever but um it was actually shot on on 16 mil and uh you know i'm very grateful for that because i only had a five to one shoot ratio yeah. that i could afford to do and and as a result uh it meant that i had to be really planned and prepared and and you know this was something that ralph always always you know taught us that we we should do um and and and, you you know it's it's kind of okay i guess some could say it's kind of an old school filmmaking mentality or whatever um now we're in the digital age but you know even digitally i always think that it makes a lot of sense to actually um you you know go in there with some sort of plan and um and uh well this is what they call a vision yes there's one of the directors that has a vision for the for the film and that just means that they are they have a, a plan of how they want to do it. It's not turn up on the day and just let's see what happens kind of thing. Well, maybe that could be considered the part of their vision, but you know that, that there's a plan in place. Yeah, and that they're you know it, it's it's a good way of of doing it because if you can just shoot anything, well then how do you know you you know what you've got or how it's going to be edited and stuff like that. And also, you know, just it, it's a way of if you of protecting of what you want to do because if you shoot too much and you're working with uh, a producer or a distribution company or a studio or somebody like that who doesn't like what you've done and they want to change it you've got all this other footage exactly 
they can, they, they can they cut it any way they want so but no i think it's it's probably one of the better ways of working yeah, i mean de- definitely in, as you know in in more recent years i've been involved in in teaching uh film production and film studies and whatever and a lot of what i've um you know what i've what i've brought to the table was was definitely you know taught to me by ralph and and the various teachers on his program um you know in those years and uh you know and as i said i still apply that to to everything that i do today so um so yeah you know um really a really sad week um it sounds like a a a great loss to 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 have lost uh you know a great guy yeah absolutely and um uh, yeah, so uh, as I said, I, I don't know. I, I don't know whether I'm sort of overstepping the mark here by talking about him and, and, and stuff, you know, without sort of clearing this with his family. But um, I haven't really said anything that that, that that you know he he hadn't told as a story many times, um, you know, during speeches and, and and class interviews and things of that nature. So nothing um, damning there, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have anything damning to say about the man. He was. He was. He was incredible. And uh, you know, I'm. I'm. I'm very, very sad. And and you know, I last saw him. I last saw him. In, uh, we we kept in touch via email and stuff over the years. But I last saw him in person um, ten years ago now, when I was out there and I was actually involved in a in a film that was produced. Um, uh, at Valencia so um you, you know that was when I last got to see him um and I, I you know I, and I don't know what this means for the future of that film program because he was very much the film program so um you, you know I hope I hope uh, there's there's some sort of worthy successor that comes in but they are going to be very very hard shoes to fill <laughs> so I mean I yeah I can't say if it's true or not but i know a few filmmakers from orlando and i wouldn't be surprised if they'd gone through the same uh body the same yeah well i I can tell you for sure that the the the, um the guys behind the blair witch project dan myrick and eduardo sanchez and uh rick hell um those those guys uh were students of ralph's um because they did they did the course prior to going to the university to get the um, to do the, uh, the, the 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 degree. So um, I know that you know he was a teacher of, of of those guys, and obviously they've gone on to to massive success. Um, whether you like Blair Witch or not, you know um, that the, that was a massively successful film. Um, so uh, that the, those those some of the names that have gone through there but there are many i mean you, you know he is he is um he's inspired and, and trained you know thousands of students over the years um i i, I think possibly nutter is the biggest success um story uh possibly but I, you know i may be doing someone in in, injustice because there <laughs> there might be someone that i'm just not aware of at this moment but um yes i, I imagine there's been a lot lot more a lot more we're going to hear about. Yeah, well, hopefully. <laughs> no, but, but thank you, Keith, for sharing that. And uh, I think uh, I think your words have, I don't think just touched me, but I think touched other people. And uh, I think uh, his family would have no problems about what you've said. So. Um, yeah, well, I've, I've been trying to reach out to them this week, but um, you know, when you when you lose touch over the years and. Uh, you know, sometimes sometimes it's, it's it's difficult to get back in touch. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so that that's that that's that's all I've got to say on that. Really, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot off my chest. I feel like actually. <laughs> <laughs> and in the immortal words of um, Forrest Gump, uh, we will leave you there. Um, so uh, yes. Um, Check out our next episode, uh, which will be D, and uh, we can you can find our work on YouTube. Uh, myself at Independent Runnings, and uh, yeah, and and I'll be on um, uh, British Isles, which is E Y L E S. Also, check out uh, my website, IndependentRunnings.com, and also check out uh, Snake Gully Productions.
com. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us and uh, join us again for our next episode. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, listeners. <laughs>